Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. In this video, we've got a first look with the Radio Design Lab's AV Pack Dante Network Interfaces. They've sent over a whole bunch of them here, and we're gonna take a quick look and see what they're all capable of. So let's jump right in. I've been really excited about these. These are interesting. And the reason I'm mostly excited about them is they run off of PoE. So right now I've got a really simple test set up here. It's been running for two days now. And uh, just to kind of let these sit on a network and then I'd like to go back and you know look at the event log and see what's been going on. And honestly, since I set one of them as the primary, let's see here. Uh, in the clock status. So I've set the, so right now the headphone amplifier is the primary clock source. And since I did that yesterday, I think at around 11 o'clock, it had been kind of bouncing around, uh, elevating different units to the clock master. And once I selected this as primary, uh, it's been sat there since 1146 last night. Uh, no events in the log since then. So they're just sitting there being rock solid doing their thing. So I've got a microphone, just a basic microphone plugged into, uh, let's run through the different units, into the microphone to network interface. And that's the AVXMN4. And that's a really nice little unit so far. I've only been using it with a dynamic, but I tested it real quick with a, with a condenser microphone. Works, phantom power, no worries there. So the way this is set up is just four microphone inputs and you've got gain selection, low medium and high so obviously this is not you know super uh, fine adjustments on the input trim you wouldn't be buying one of these as your like primary uh, recording interface or something like that but if you need to get a microphone or a microphone level source onto a Dante network this is a really decent way to do it uh, because it's PoE like I said so you can just set this at the end of a cat5 run you've got four microphone inputs with what I've seen so far pretty good uh, gain adjustments there so just with the let's see here and you can see down here there's a little uh, hey hey so if I'm right up on this SM57 I'm already hitting that clip light so let's switch that down to low hey hey yeah so with low if i'm right up on it that's great and you can switch it all the way up to high if you need a, a whole bunch of gain so right now i've just got it set to medium and seems to to work just the way it should and a couple of other units i have going on here so i'm monitoring that back on my headphone monitor here for the moment on a pair of audio technica headphones and i can hear that which is great uh the nice part about this is this is a stereo unit and you can absolutely route uh, different things to left and right on this. So you can, you can absolutely, right now I've got microphone channel four of this unit routed, of this unit routed to both left and right, but you could cue different things up in each uh, side of that. It works perfectly. This one also quarter inch or eighth inch adapter there. That's a really nice way to drop a monitor mix or something uh, for a musician on stage. I could see this being really handy. You run out a piece of Cat5 and you've got a really nice monitor station there that you can assign you know, left and right independently very quickly right from the console or Dante controller. So that's pretty cool. So we've got our microphone going into the XMN4. We've got that being monitored on the NH1. I've also got the line level output, the NL4 here, and this is selected over to line level on the little, little dip switches down here. You can have it come out at line level or drop it down minus 50 dB uh, to mic level there if you need to output mic level. So again, really handy unit if you're doing press conferences. If you need to drop a couple of uh, quick press uh, feeds, uh, mic or line level right there off a of PoE snake. That's pretty hard to beat for small press conferences. So I've got, uh, again, my microphone is coming out of channel four of here and I just did channel four so you could see easier with the camera angle. If I plug stuff in over here, you wouldn't be able to see it. But so that line level signal is feeding over to my desk into a little Mackie mixer and that's feeding my uh, reference monitors there. So I can feed that over there and monitor what's going on on this part of the network. Uh, just an analog signal over to there, but then for my iMac coming back, I've got a USB, uh, I've got one of these 
Avio adapters, but the USB, this is a XLR, and I'm using that as a sound card to play back out of the iMac into the network and then monitor off the network into the iMac, record things like that. So just a general test using some of the Radio Design Lab stuff on a very simple network, single switch, four devices here, plus the USB device over there, and that's coming in on the non-PoE side of this switch because that's powered by the USB bus. So the only one we haven't talked about here because I'm not using it right now is it is on the network. Uh, which model is this? This is the LN4 and that's a four line level input. So this one here, the microphone to network interface is mic level. Uh, the one below it does line level. So if you've got wireless mics or anything like that that's capable of outputting a line level signal, you don't need to boost it up. You don't need the mic pre's. This unit here is uh, the one for you. And let me spin that around. I just had it set up so we could see the back. We can go over that really quickly. So the back of all these units is very similar. You've got the Dante input here. You've got your link light, your network uh, activity light, and then you have a spot to plug in a wall war 24 volt power. Now these are all unique in that they can be run off of either power over ethernet or that wall war. Because if you are providing that PoE power, you can also provide the wall power and it'll source first from the wall power. And if that fails, it'll seamlessly fail over to the PoE power without dropping the signal. So this is a really nice option. So you can have both of those power supplies there ready to go and the unit will fail over seamlessly and make those choices depending on what's available. So let's turn this one around and have a look. Now these have been running for two days straight and they're not like very warm at all. But yeah, there you go. The line level audio to network interface is as simple as it sounds. It's four line level XLR input. So that's very simple. And again, you've got a signal light and a clip light on each one of these inputs here. There is no light on the output, uh, the NL4 output. And that can be handy. I've noticed a couple of situations where I've been dealing with Dante networks where it is handy to know that, you know, like on a uh, Rio box, if there's a signal actually making it to that physical output or not, uh, usually it tends to be a patching error in my experience where you think you've checked a box Box and you know you haven't and something's just not where it's supposed to be. Now so. let me move my headphone box over and I'll show you here. They all have a nice sync light on the right hand side. I'm sure you can see that now. And those just let you know at a glance that you are connected and synced to the network. So let's take a look. I'm trying to decide which one. I guess the microphone input unit would probably have the most interesting stuff going on. So let's pull that apart while I'm just going to unplug and take it off the network here. And we'll see it disappear over there in a moment. And they come with these mounting clamps, which took me a couple of moments the first time I looked at them. I actually had to take the paperwork out, get the paperwork included, and you can see that you just kind of snug these up against the side into the fins here. And if you were working on these, these you can light stuff here out of the way. So if you're working on installing these onto a surface, this is a, like an MDF, you would literally just slide these up against it like that and then screw down those points. And you do that on both sides and that unit is not coming out of there. So that's a really elegant and simple way just to kind of uh, attach these down to uh, you know an installation shelf or a board or whatever it is that you need to do. So let's take a quick look at this guy and see what kind of tools we need. So let's try to coax this the rest of the way out. Ah ha. Uh, so yeah, their stuff is built like a tank. Really nice, heavy, appropriately heavy, I should say. Now for the real 
magic inside. Let's, can we get these off? Wow, there's a lot of screws holding this in. Count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws holding this down. You can see the standoffs in there. So let's go ahead and just go all the way. All right, again, nice bottom case, really nicely made. So here we have it. This is what's going on inside the microphone module. So this one probably has the most on it because obviously you've got all the microphone preamp circuitry to deal with here. And let's take a closer look. So it's the bottom of that. And you can see some uh, test points here, perhaps. And there's our primary chip from Audinate there. What's this little fellow all about? Let's see. Silver Tell AG9724 Revision 1. There's our input side, power input and network, and our microphone circuitry over here. We've got two Cirrus CS4272 CZZ. So those guys there. And then what are we using for op amps over here? I'm gonna have to get in there with my uh, camera. Uh, let's see if we can zoom down. This one probably won't zoom down that far and won't be able to maintain focus. Nah. Really nicely put together as always from Radio Design Labs. Very tidy, very uniform. Everything's very serviceable. I have uh, no doubt in my mind that if you were to send this back for some reason to Radio Design Labs, uh, they would have no problem at all repairing this. Uh, I don't think most people would have a problem repairing this. If you're able to identify uh, something that had gone wrong on this board, very accessible. Other than the density, I mean, there are they are just absolutely packed in there pretty tight. If you were to have to replace an individual component here using a, a heat gun, it would be a challenge for sure. It's definitely the density is very high on this board, but just beautifully accessible, uh, well laid out. Uh, everything's compartmentalized. So really nice package from Radio Design Labs. You could get in there and make a repair if needed. And uh, yeah, I don't imagine you'd have too many issues with this. There's not a whole lot really to go wrong here. Um, Physically, there's not a whole lot to go wrong other than something like a switch maybe breaking uh, and that would be fairly simple to repair. Uh, and so anything that mechanically was to go wrong with this, I'd feel pretty confident of fixing and uh, electrically, as long as you are comfortable getting into uh, something as densely packed as that, uh, if you're comfortable doing uh, board level repair on you know, any sort of computer these days or, or cell phone or anything like that, this will be uh, pretty comfortable for you. So really nice. And that is what's inside. So why don't we just go ahead for fun and let's power it up. Uh, let's power it up outside of its box. Yeah, because why not? Let's zoom back out and let's uh, see what happens. So we got a little light show going on down here. And man, I really like the way those LEDs are integrated like right onto the board. That is slick. Like those, I don't know if I'm, I'm describing that right, but those are like, they have the appearance of being a part of the PCB, which is, they're just so small. That's incredibly cool. Uh, the way they've stuck them right on the end like that. Over here, they look normal. They just look like LEDs, but that's that's a neat effect, the way that sits like that. I don't know if that's coming across in the camera, but and then we've got same thing over here. So you can kind of see it's just kind of the end of the PCB is just kind of glowing through. Uh, neat. I like that. So that's, let's see, that should be back online now. Yeah, that's back on the network uh, over there. So one of the challenges I've found is there is so much going on in these Dante 
uh, devices. Like this is a pretty advanced little box, but there's not a whole lot to show. The reason I was interested in these is because I really enjoy those Avio adapters. Let me see if I can just lean this against something there. So I've really enjoyed using these. They've been very helpful. They're they're nice and lightweight. Uh, you can you know let them dangle out the back of a piece of gear. They weigh nothing. There are definitely situations I've run into where I've been using the Avio adapters and having a couple more channels would have been really handy. You're already running the cable, you've got the PoE uh, being sent, and you're on the network, so, you know, throw in as many channels as you can for the size. Now, obviously, this is a size step up from these uh, Avio adapters, but these are also a plastic material. So these are obviously quite a bit bigger than the Avio adapters, but these are plastic. There's no real way to mount them to anything. These have their advantages for being lightweight and plastic and everything else, but there are situations where being able to mount these to something, mount them into an amp rack. If you have older legacy gear, for instance, that you like to use and you want to use with your Dante network, these could be a really good way to discreetly mount four channels in or out or both. Um, out of the way in a rack somewhere, either off to the side or onto a shelf, and get your legacy gear onto the Dante network with a pretty simple little box here that you don't have to worry about plugging into anything else. You just throw a switch either into the rack or run PoE to that rack and you're set to go. And these could be really good for bringing a legacy amp rack, for instance. You could take the line level output unit stick that into a four channel amplifier rack and off you go. You've got a Dante enabled rack. So really interesting little units. They certainly have a place in the work that I do. And I think they're gonna be very helpful for uh, installation uh, clients that need to bring maybe legacy uh, racks or legacy uh, NAV closet things in there onto a Dante network that they maybe they've upgraded to. Uh, I've worked with a few folks where they've uh, had installation systems in their facility, plus also maybe a mobile system that they move around. And that mobile system has been upgraded to a Dante, uh, like a Yamaha mixer and a Dante Rio uh, setup. Once they kind of get comfortable with that and see what it's really capable of, they want to start bringing their other gear onto the network as well. So that's it for the Radio Design Labs AV Pack Dante interfaces. I think they're really cool. I know I'm going to get some uh, comments about pricing on these. Obviously, if you are looking to buy a four channel interface, there are certainly cheaper options. But uh, if you're looking to buy a four channel Dante interface with redundant power supply options that can be left in a rack forever and ever and be expected to work, uh, there's not a ton, and these are priced pretty fairly compared to what's out there. So that's it for the Radio Design Labs Dante AV Pack interfaces. They are really well built, really nice units. Let us know down in the comments below what you'd use them for. I've given you a couple of examples of where I would see them being very helpful, either in AV racks or bringing legacy gear online. And then obviously around the stage, these things are built like tanks. I would have no problem putting one of these out on stage uh, for certain jobs. Obviously these are not, uh, they don't offer redundancy just like these Avio adapters. You know, obviously there's no primary and secondary on these on the network side. So uh, depending on what you're doing, you may feel more or less comfortable using these in a live situation on a big stage. Uh, but for almost anything else, for zones, for, you know, anything that that's not gonna be a showstopper if you have to uh, swap over to your secondary network, these are really, really nice. Um, so leave the comments below. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have any questions. And I will definitely get those over to Radio Design Labs. Thank you to my friend Doug over at Radio Design Labs for sending all this cool stuff over for us to talk about and look at together. It's always really fun seeing what they're up to because they're just like a little bit outside of the live sound world that most of us operate in but they're making really cool stuff that most of us see and run into, uh, you know, pretty regularly on the installation side. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks to everybody for supporting the channel. We will be back soon. Take a look at dcsoundup.com. I've been making updates like constantly over there, trying to clean it up, tighten it up, make it more useful. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see on the site. I'll see you next time.